we present a study of two tangible interactive museum exhibits where we focused on the distribution of control of the exhibits and the role it played in companion social activities while using the exhibit. If we think about why we go to museums, it can be for educational reasons, to see an exhibition or artefacts, or because we're tourists on our holidays. But a museum visit is a highly social experience. People often go to the museum with their family or friends to spend quality time with them. And even visiting alone, other people in the museum influence our experience. As technology is increasingly adopted by cultural heritage venues to communicate narratives about their collections, we question how such exhibits may support the social aspect of the visit for companions. Providing multiple controllers for several people to interact simultaneously is one way to support multiple users interacting with the exhibit, but this does not always facilitate social interaction between companions while using the exhibit. With this in mind, the focus of our research is on the distribution of control of the exhibits and the role it plays in companions' social and shared interactions while they use the exhibits. We studied visitors' interactions at two exhibits at the Riverside Museum in Glasgow, using video audio recordings to capture vid visitors' interactions and behaviours. Our findings are focused on the analysis of 17 groups, nine at one exhibit and eight groups at another exhibit. The exhibits we focused on are called the Glenn Douglas and the Firefighter exhibit. Looking at the social activities visitors engaged in, we observed visitors coordinating their actions with their companions, such as relaying information from one part of the exhibit to companions located at another part of the exhibit, and their companions using this information to interact with particular controllers. We also saw visitors stop using controllers, turn their attention towards their companions and ask their companions to interact with the controllers they have access to. A highly social activity to stop interacting and turn attention towards others and ask them to interact. Another social activity was particular movement patterns between companions over the course of the time they spent at the exhibit. For example, stepping away from controllers are starting to look at the rest of the exhibit and mediate their companions' interaction with the exhibit. This created opportunities for others to physically interact with the exhibit and situations where visitors shared the same controller back and forth with each other. The movement patterns suggested there were understated positions of control that visitors moved to after first using a more obvious interaction point. We suggest these social interactions and ways companions shared interaction were underpinned by the distribution of control at the exhibits. Focusing on the distribution of control, we identified four ways or mechanisms which distributed control. A physical distribution of control in that there was more than one physical controller which were physically separated over a large distance. A temporal distribution of control in that the use of certain controllers was appropriate and inappropriate at particular moments during the use of the exhibit. A functional distribution of control in that different controllers manipulated the exhibit in different ways and an indirect distribution of control where companions verbally influence their companions interaction with the exhibit. So these are the four ways that we've identified control is distributed at these exhibits. We suggest these are considerations when designing to support co-participation, shared interaction and social interaction between companions at interactive exhibits that have multiple controllers. In our discussion, we talk about the interaction with the exhibit being distributed among group members in a way that led to alternating sequential interaction, referring back and forth between each other using the different controllers and resources, rather than individuals interacting with the exhibit in a more independent way simultaneously. This created an interaction where companions relied upon each other, presenting opportunities to support each other and encouraging visitors to focus beyond themselves. The exhibits presented visitors with alternative perspectives and positions to engage with, swapping positions with companions. There appeared to be desirable positions visitors were initially drawn to and understated positions of control, which we argue supported parents' inclusion in physical interaction and encouraged movements to other parts of the exhibit. Thank you for listening. We'd love to hear your questions or comments.